Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Faith Builders Conference. Just welcome everyone here. Facebook. Do we have Facebook going? Okay, we want to welcome everyone online through Facebook. We thank you for being here with us. And tonight, uh, we've got our own pastor speaking tonight. And I just want to share a little bit about his his uh, mission this year, his vision. It's let's grow together. So we we are here today, tonight, and tomorrow, and Sunday to build on our relationship and on our leadership skills. And we just want to thank everyone for being here. Um, the scripture for tonight is 2 Thessalonians 1, 3, and that is the conference scripture. Is that correct? And it is, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. That's the scripture. We thank you, Father, for everything you're doing tonight in our service. We thank you for the speakers, for each one of them, Father, that as they speak, Father, that as the word goes out, that it penetrates the heart. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We can all go ahead and stand. We can praise. Amen. This is amazing grace. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth? Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The king of glory, the king above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that 
you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Amen, amen. You may be seated, amen. Good evening, folks. How are you guys doing tonight? Hey, I got a little, little testimony or actually a little uh, admission here. I'm more nervous just doing this little thing than I was preaching on Sunday for some reason. Uh, but it's a good thing. And the reason why I say that is because I'm just praying over the offering, thanking you folks out there for your offering. And also, too, um, I'm just asking on your behalf of this offering tonight that uh, you just act on faith. That's all I'm asking. Simple. Just be in agreement. And I just got a quote from two scriptures. We're going to put them together because it's God's word, and it's the best way to preach and also to speak over our lives. Amen? And as you do that, you can also do it through uh, our app online on Facebook. It's Push Pay, if I'm correct. You can donate that way. Also, too, part of your time as well for the spreading of the word of God. Amen? So the first one we're going to go to is 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. And I'll get ahead of us for this. And it says, for every man according to his purpose in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So there's the instruction there. Also, too, it's a state of mind of where you should be at as far as in understanding that you're giving. Just be cheerful. And the second part of this, of the scripture that I'm going to give you just ties it all together so that we can actually see it and also just understand it. Because the fact is, just be cheerful in whatever you give. You know, it comes from the heart, and that's the way we want it. Because the fact is, also, too, you know, you can get it a hundredfold, a thousandfold. And all you have to do is be in agreement. So just give happily for this. And the second one is Philippians 4.19. And why you give this, come to the understanding of this. As you give, what are you getting in return? It says here, 4.19. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way for this, folks. That's all we're asking for. Give happily, knowing that God will provide what you give. And then some, a hundredfold. So tonight, folks, let's just say a prayer over this. Lord, thank you for the blessing that you're providing for those that's spreading the word of God. Not only will it not come void, but it will just come overflowing in every way possible for those that are, are giving out of their purses, their time tonight. In every way. We thank you for that, Lord, because we know for the fact is that you're giving God, you're loving Father. That when you give this, that we know for a fact is that as a father sees this as his children, then he supplies all their needs. In every way possible. And that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. Are we done? Amen. We're going to go ahead and sing the song as we pick up our offering. I don't know where the buckets are. Oh, you guys are passing them? Oh, oh okay. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand. You provide the fire, and I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit, and I will open up inside. 
You provide the fire. And I provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit. And I will open up inside. You provide the fire. And I provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit. And I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Cause you provide the fire. You pour out your spirit, and I will open up inside. Cause you provide the fire, and I provide the sacrifice. Cause you pour out your spirit. Yeah. 
over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run My Uber just called. Uh, uh, I said, He'll, he's going to be there. Uh, uh, Pastor Roger is flying in, so he won't be here tonight, but he's uh, flying in. And I got uh, uh, one of my cousins that drives Uber to go pick him up. And she just calls and says, he hasn't texted me. I said, he, will, he got on the plane, <laughs> so he'll be there. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. Listen, uh, uh, um, I am excited uh, about this conference, and uh, I know when Josue and I were discussing it, you know, I, I told him, we're going to do it by faith, we're going to teach on faith, we're going to do it by faith, I said, and you know what, I said, I remember Andrew saying that when he first started, he was started with four or five people. I said, if that's what we have, great. But you're all here. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we're starting off uh, this with a little bit more than, than what other people have started. So praise God. Uh, listen, um, God is awesome. God is awesome. You know. And... And I believe God wants to do great things in our midst, you know, but he's, uh, he's working to position us, position us to where we could uh, sustain the growth, you know. Uh, I've said this, that at the beginning of the year, the Lord uh, told, told us, let us grow together. That's the phrase God gave me for the beginning of this year, let us grow together. And, and, and my question, I said, Lord, so what do I do? He goes, identify the areas that you and the church need growth in. 
do you know that you and this church need to go through? You know, and I don't know if you know, that's kind of challenging to a pastor. You know, because I'm fully grown. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, you know, but to identify areas uh, that I need growth in, you know, uh, it was it was a little a little difficulty, you know. But um, I've I've identified some, and one of the main ones, because I want us to be a church that moves in the miraculous. Listen to what I'm saying. I, I want to be a church that moves on the miraculous. And we can't be that church that moves in the miraculous if we're moved by our five physical senses. You know, and, and sad to say, sad to say, we have been moving in our five physical senses for a while. You know, and, and we need to, to begin to move and grow in faith. You know, so uh, one of the things that I did, and I thank God for a good friend of mine that, because uh, uh, Brother Hagen has an awesome series on the ABCs of faith, and I didn't want to call and order it because when I first heard the ABCs of faith from Brother Hagen, he had a, a, a eight tape series, but then they did a lot of editing and they cut it down to six tapes. And I had that ABCs of uh, uh, series, the eight, the eight uh, CDs I practically memorized because I'd hear them over and over again. And uh, when I, I I wore them out, so I bought the uh, the series again, and I know, hey, there's only six tapes in here. They said, yeah, that's because we edited it and we cut it down. And I said, so I listened to it, I said, but there's a lot of good stuff that's missing. You know, and so I was talking to a friend, and he goes, you know, I have that eight-tape series. And he made it for me in, in CD, so I went looking for them. I found them. I've been listening to them. You know, why? Because I figured I need to grow. I need to strengthen my faith. You know, we all need to strengthen our faith. Um, so that's why the Lord said, have a conference. And have a faith conference. You know, so you're going to hear... You know, Jesus said this uh, at, the Mount of, uh, uh, at the Mount of Temptation. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. And basically what Jesus was saying is what bread is to the body, that's what my word is to your spirit. Now, how many ate uh, a piece of white bread today? Or wheat? How many had a, a tortilla today? <laughs> I'm going to brag a little bit. You know, I had a, I had a tortilla, and I had a piece of uh, sweet bread, and little, little, I had me a popover today. <laughs> Natalie uh, decided to make some popovers. So I had three different types of bread. But guess what? It's still bread. It just has, it's just made a little different. So uh, Pastor Roger, Pastor Josue, myself, we're going to deal on the subject of faith. That means we're going to overlap on some of, but it's going to have a different flavor. You know, but don't say, oh, he's preaching the same thing. Listen to it. Because you might catch something that you missed when, I, when I'm teaching. You know, you, uh, uh, Pastor Roger might say something that uh, Pastor Josue said, but you didn't catch it that well when he said it. But hey, when Pastor Roger said it, wow. 
And listen to what I'm going to say. We've always said this at, at, the, uh, at the encounters. We've always said this at, at the encounters. It's one thought that he, held, holds you captive. It's one thought that holds you captive. And it only takes one word of God to set you free from that one thought. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go ahead and open our Bibles to Romans 10, 9 and 10. And it says that if, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, our, uh, our, our, our scripture for our theme today is we, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitted, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. So notice your faith grows exceedingly. In other words, uh, uh, your faith is building up. It's, it, it, and it's not that you're getting, listen to what I'm saying, it's not that you're getting more faith. It's that uh, when I used to work out in the lettuce, this muscle was, you know, kind of big, kind of solid. I went to doing taxes and being a caregiver. At, now it shakes down here. <laughs> but the muscle is still there. That same muscle is still there. So you have faith. It's still there. It's not, it's not like, but it's going to get stronger. You know, so uh, I've titled uh, uh, my message, Returning to the Basics of Faith. Returning to the Basics of Faith. And this scripture of Romans 10, 9, and 10, it gives us an example. Listen to what I'm saying. It gives us an example, and then it gives us the, uh, the, the, the principle of how faith operates. The example is on salvation. How do you get saved? Well, it's a two-part thing. You believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and you confess with your mouth to activate that salvation. So, so that's the example. But the principle, you know, the, the rule or the spiritual law of it is verse 10, where it says, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. In other words, you're going to believe in your heart. You're going to believe in your heart. And then you're going to confess with your mouth. And I just gave you the whole, the whole message that I'm going to be preaching today and tomorrow. In that little short uh, subject. You believe in your heart, and you confess Confess with your mouth. So tonight, I want to deal with what is faith? What is faith? You know, uh, and I want to deal with the issue of believing. You know, in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, I believe that this scripture is a description and a definition of faith. Listen to what I'm saying. I believe this scripture is a description and a definition of faith. Now faith is the things uh, is the substance of things hoped for. That's the description of what faith does. Faith is now. Faith speaks in the now. Faith never speaks in the future. Faith always speaks in the now. And it gives substance. It gives substance to the things you hope for. In other words, faith is the building block, uh, is, is the material, while hope is the blueprint. Hope is the picture of what you want, but faith, faith is you acting on that blueprint. When you're going to build a house, you get the blueprint. That's hope. But then you start putting the pieces together. That's faith. Faith is now. The description is 
the evidence of things, the definition is the evidence of things not seen. And you say, why do you say that's, that's, that's the definition? Because that word evidence, it's actually translated conviction. The conviction of things not seen. In other words, you have a solid conviction that even though you don't see it, but it's yours. You know, we have uh, all you mamas. You had a conviction when you were pregnant with your baby. You had a conviction that there was a life on the inside of you. And nobody could convince you otherwise. Even though nobody else could see that baby. You were fully convinced that you had a life on the inside of your womb. That's what faith is. It's a conviction of things not seen. The Greek dictionary defines faith as assurance, belief, belief, conviction, faith, and fidelity. I want to deal just on the basis of uh, if, if you ever listen to uh, Papa Hagen's ABCs of Faith, uh, he, he, he expounds quite a bit, and it's awesome. Uh, on, on the now, he expounds on faith versus hope, which is all good. But in, in my time, I want to deal with the, with the two words, belief and conviction. Belief and conviction. You know, you have to believe. One of the things that you have to believe, it's a must. It's a must. You have to believe that God is God. You have to believe that God is God. I don't care what's going on around you. I don't care what's happening around you. I don't care what has happened. You have to believe that God is God. Hallelujah. No matter what's going on, you have to believe that God is God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what uh, 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 the media and everybody else is saying. You have to believe that God is God. Hebrews 11, uh, 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. You know, let me say this. If someone does not believe God is God, don't waste your time trying to convince them. God did not send you to try to convince people that God is God. God called you to go preach the gospel, not to argue with people. You know, I, I, I heard this testimony uh, from, from a brother up in uh, Riverside. He said that uh, one day the Lord told him to go up to the mountain because there's a mountain and then Riverside sits at the bottom. He says, go to, that, uh, go to the top and start speaking a blessing over Riverside. He said that as he got up there, there was a witch cursing the city of Riverside. And so he said he started to talk to him, and they started uh, discussing, and he said, and after two hours, after two hours, he said, the Lord told him, when are you going to do what I told you to go do up here? I didn't tell you to come up here to argue with, with this person that doesn't believe. He said, I told you to come up here and bless the city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has not called us to go argue with people and try to convince them that God exists. Present the gospel. And when they begin to believe that God is God, they will accept the gospel. You know, I went to Wilcox, Arizona with a, with a, 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 a pastor 
friend of mine, these things are bothering me. Nobody ever calls me. <laughs> and now uh, I'm getting a lot of calls tonight. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and um, we took an elderly gentleman, uh, me and two, uh, two pastor friends of mine and uh, myself. We went up there. We took this elderly gentleman up there. And he went and called his neighbor. And his neighbor came, and he's going on on the stars and the moon and, and, and the universe. And, and they're arguing with him, uh, reading scriptures to him. And they, he just keeps going on and on. And after two hours of, of, uh, of them arguing with him, two, three hours, because we got there at 12, and it was, we didn't leave there till 4 o'clock, almost 5. You know, after all that time they've been, they asked me, Pastor Eli, would you like to talk to him? I said, no. They go, well, maybe you should. I said, okay. I said, hey, listen, I, I just have one question for you. Do you believe that the Bible is the word of God? He said, oh, uh, you know, the moon and the stars. I said, no, 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 no. That's not what I asked you. I didn't ask you about the moons and the stars and the universe. I asked you if you believe that the, uh, if, if the word, if you believe that the Bible is the word of God. And he started off again with the moons and the stars and the universe. He was an agnostic. You know, and, and, and I asked him again, and, and I said, that, that's not what I asked you. I, I've heard you already for three hours, you know, on the moons and the stars and the universe and, and the goddesses. and the, I mean, he had all, uh, I said, I'm asking you if you believe that the Bible is the word of God. And when I pressured him, no! I said, well, there's no need for me to waste my time with you. I mean, my thought was, we've already wasted three hours. <laughs> you know, there's no need for me. Nothing that I read out of this book is going to reach you because you don't believe this is the word of God. You don't believe this is the final authority. So you have to believe that God is God. Amen? Amen? And there's a second thing that you have to believe about God. Not only do you have to believe that God is God, but that scripture says that he is a rewarder. In other words, he's not out looking out to, to judge you. He's not looking out to condemn you. He's not looking out to punish you. He's not looking out to do any harm to you. He's out looking to reward you. Hallelujah. God is seeking ways to reward you. You know, back, back in the day, back in, when I first started ministry, I thought God was up there thinking of ways how he could punish me. And because that's the way I felt God was with, with, uh, was with me when I got up to preach, you all got it. You all were heathens and liars and sinners and backsliders. You know, Josue had a had a school teacher, and and uh, Sister Judah was going through my photo album and saw a picture of her, and and she said, "Oh, I know her." We went to school together. I said, we went to church together. And Sister Judah asked, did you ever date her? I said, no. And she goes, she goes, she goes, why not? I said, she wasn't spiritual enough. Why? See, back then we had church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And Tuesday and Thursday was, Tuesday was ladies' fellowship and Thursday was men's fellowship. 
And she wasn't spiritual enough because she didn't go to Tuesday or Thursday. She only went Sunday morning, Sunday night, and to the youth service. You know, I went to all of them. I went to the uh, ladies' uh, fellowship, and I went to the men's fellowship. So she wasn't spiritual enough. Sister Judah looked at me and smiled and said, I'm glad she wasn't. (laughs) But we had an idea that God was out to judge us and punish us. And that God was this old man with a great big long stick just Come on, just just mess up a little bit, and your hair blew uh, 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 some way that it wasn't supposed to blow. And bam, you you, you had to uh, you should have been wearing it in a tight bun. <laughs> Amen. We always had judgment on our mind. God was good. We just. Uh, We just knew that he loved us, but we didn't know how. He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Folks, you have to to get a conviction. God is God. And he is a good God seeking to bless you. Hallelujah. Seeking to bless you. Camilo, God is God. And he's seeking to bless you. God is God. And he's seeking. Jenny, God is God. And he's seeking to bless you. Pastor Leo, Pastor Irma, God is God. And he's seeking to bless you. Pastor Leanne, God is God. And he's seeking to bless you. Sister Esther, God is God. And he's seeking to bless you. Vicente, God is God. And he's seeking to bless you. He's not seeking to bring misery to you. He's seeking to bless you. And you got to have a conviction of it. I mean, you have to be totally convinced. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You just have to be convinced that God is God and he's seeking to bless you. Hallelujah. When we went through the tragedy of losing my wife and losing Pastor Josh, something, there was a conviction on the inside of me. God is God and he's seeking to bless me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is God, and he's the rewarder. You have to be totally convinced of that fact. It doesn't matter what you're facing right now. People in Facebook, it doesn't matter what you're facing. God is God, and he's seeking to bless you. Hallelujah. We must believe that his word is final authority. Listen to these scriptures. Psalms 1830. God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is tried and true. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. Another version says, his word has been proven. You know, family, Bar family, I want to remind you of all the miracles that we've had in the past. We've had plenty of miracles. To begin to start doubting that they exist today. Amen. Listen, my wife died of cancer. But it doesn't stop the fact that Sister Esther was dying of cancer and God healed her miraculously. I'm not going to say 
God is not in the healing business anymore. We've seen too many miracles to begin to start doubting now. His word is final. It's been proven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His word has been proven. His word has been proven. It's been tested and it has been proven to work. You know, I remember back in 1995 when mom was in in, in, in intensive care unit. Doctors came out to the waiting room and said, uh, we need to ship her out to Phoenix because she's she's got a blood infection. She uh, got a blood infection that's uh, 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 damaging her vital organs and she's got a fever that we can't bring under control so we can't do anything to that infection until we get the fever under control something happens we won't be able to save her and I went into that I remember going into that room and I said mom this is what the doctors are saying this is what the doctors are saying and I remember telling her, Mom, I want you to just laugh with me. And we began to laugh. And then I asked her, I said, Mom, do you know why you're laughing? And she lit up like a neon sign and said, Because the devil's a liar. <laughs> I'm not going to die now. I'm not ready to go. I'm not ready to go. The word has been proven. And it works, folks, if we put it to work. It, it has to be final authority in our lives. Psalms 33, verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. By his word, everything was made. Nothing was not made without his word. This is what, listen, this is one of the reasons why I give a lot of emphasis to the word of God. Amen? Because all of our existence is, is held up to the word of God. Go to Hebrews, because I know it's not on there. Go to Hebrews 1, 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, notice, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, had sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. That word, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Everything is held together by the word of God. Listen, the reason our world does not, uh, 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 this earth does not get too close to the sun is because God's word is holding it in its place. The reason it doesn't drift away is because God's word is holding it in its place. Every part of your being is being held together by the word of God. But something that I want you to notice, it doesn't say, because to me proper English would be by the power of his word. To me, by the word of his power, has to be poor English. But there's a reason why he worded it that way. And the reason is, if we say by the power of his word, the word is dependent on his power. 
But by saying the word of his power, the power is dependent on God's word. Hallelujah. The power is dependent on what God has said. Hallelujah. All the power is depending what has God said. So it is. it would behoove us to find out what has God said about my life? What has God said about you? Psalms 89, 34. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. No, it's, it's not going to change, folks. It's not going to change. And today, listen, in our days today, we are faced. We are faced with so much unbelief on the Word of God. How many have seen that uh, the movie Noah that was made recently? Praise God. <laughs> uh, they made, they made that event look like it was a myth, like it was untrue. And, and, and Hollywood is picking out stories that you better get into the Bible. If you're going to go see that movie, you better go into the Bible and verify that what that movie is showing is true. Or just don't watch it. Thank you. I haven't seen it, but to what people have told me, you know, uh, because what they want to do is they want to they want to they want to paint a picture of this book that it's full of fairy tales, and this book is not full of fairy tales. This book is full of God's word, and it's quick and it is alive. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's powerful. It's quick and it's alive. And it will give you life. Psalms 119, verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, your, wor your word is settled in heaven. Psalms 138, verse 2. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Listen to this. This is a strong statement. This is a very, very strong statement. Because you know what he's saying? You have magnified your word. Above all your name. What he's saying is you put your, your, your existence on the line. By magnifying his word above all his name. He's saying if I don't keep my word, I have to cease to exist. If my word is altered, I have to cease to exist. That's, listen folks, that's a strong statement. And he repeats this in Hebrews uh, chapter, chapter 6 where it says that, that by two immutable things which it is impossible for God to lie. The two immutable things was his word. His word never changes. He gave us his word. And the second thing is he took an oath. And we, when he took that oath, that's when he's settling his word above his name. 
Because he's swearing upon his own existence that if I do not fulfill my word, I have to cease to exist. You know, I, I watched a movie uh, many years ago. It was called The Never Ending Story. Anybody watch it with me? A Teru. You know, it was just a big nothingness coming. Folks, if God ever ceases to exist, that's what we're looking at, where everything goes into total nothingness because he is life, he is life, and he is love, and he is the one, as we read in Hebrews chapter uh, 1, verse 3, he is the one that upholds everything together. Psalms 119, 160. The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Listen, I'm going to touch a little subject that uh, I think we all need to face. And come to terms with it. When my wife died. I. I had no problem. No issue. Because. I knew. That I had released her to go. And I realized afterwards that she was wanting to go. You know, so it was not a struggle for me. It was not a struggle in my faith walk. Because I just recognized where I was at. And I'm always transparent. I don't try to pretend something that I'm not. Amen. Hallelujah. But when Pastor Josh passed away, it hit my faith like a, a bowler. You know, and I think it hit all of our faith. A demolition boulder. I mean, it hit us to the root and to the core. Because Pastor Josh was very bold. He preached, and, and, and towards the end of his life, he's preaching Psalms 91, no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. And he's being very bold about it, that no plague is going to come nigh his dwelling. And yet, COVID hit, and he went home to be with the Lord. And my, my thought around this was, Lord, how do I deal with this? You know, and I've waited and I've gathered information and I've come to this understanding now you could agree with me or you could dis disagree with me he died in faith he died in faith but this is what I see you know uh, when he passed away Pastor Leanne spoke to me and, and, and she said you know, uh, the hardest thing for me is that he died alone in the hospital. Judah got to come home. Judah had Drew, and Natalie, Liz, Esther, you know, Pastor Josh around her, the, uh, Josue. You know, we were all there uh, for her. It was an awesome going home. You know, because I, 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 I went into the room at 11 o'clock to check her vitals and her 
her, uh, uh, her pulse was 120, which is elevated, but you could see this vein, you know, beating real fast. And, and her oxygen was normal. It was at 95. But I had been hit with COVID. I had been hit with a lot of thoughts. And then the struggle of having two of the nearest ladies in my, uh, in my life, my wife being number one, and then my sister-in-law that we cared for in the hospital. And every time, I, and I'm fighting COVID, and every time the phone rings, it's a doctor for either one of those because I was power of attorney for my sister-in-law and, of course, as my wife, and it's all bad news, and I mean, I just felt... Listen, there was times when I, I, I wanted to just, Lord, take me home. You know, so I went in that room and I checked her vitals. And I talked to her. She was unconscious. And I told her, I said, honey, I love you. I love you, but this is too heavy on me. If you want to go, it's okay. If you want to go, it's okay. And the moment I said that, her, I saw this vein from going like this, it started real slow. So I immediately put the oxymeter on her and her pulse had dropped to 20. From 120, it went down 100 points to 20. And her oxygen went from 95 to 55. I went and woke Jose up. I said, Mom was getting ready to go. So I called Sister Esther. I called the people that were there. And... They came, and you know us, we sing people into heaven. We sang mama into heaven, so we started singing. And we began to sing, we are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. On holy ground. As we started to sing that song, she came out of unconsciousness and started to sing with us. And she sang the whole song with us. And as soon as we finished singing, she called my name. And I got up. And I told her again, I said, honey, it's okay if you want to go home. And the moment I said, it's okay if you want to go home, she stopped breathing. And of course, she's the love of my life. I started to cry. The moment I started to cry, <gasps> she takes a deep breath in. And I told her, no, 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 no. I said, don't hold back. I said, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. And the moment I said, I'm going to be okay, she was gone. I can reconciliate that. But when it came to pastor, I had a, I had a difficult time. You know, I started preaching, don't ask God why. And as I, I'm preaching that message to you, I'm preaching it to myself. Because you don't know how, I mean, I, my, the foundation of my belief has been, has been hit. And, and, and 
will it stand the hit? Pastor Leanne said he died alone. He died alone. You know, and I don't know uh, if it was an actual man or if it was an angel. I mean, I, I have strong belief that it could have been just him. God sent an angel to uh, Washington State, you know, had him sit in a lobby waiting to see a specific lady in that lobby. The lo that lady happened to be my niece, Alvia. When he saw her, he said, you're the one I've been waiting for. He said, tell your aunt that he didn't die alone. Jesus was there. And his mama and his daddy were there. You know, I had Sister Esther preach couple of several Wednesdays ago and uh, and she confessed she goes uh, I had to ask God why I had to ask God why and so I'm curious what God answered her and this is the answer God gave her but I've been, I had been preaching for a week it's not a it's not up to us to know. It's just between him and God. And he told her what went on in that room. What went on in that room. It's just between me and him. And nobody else needs to know. Amen. Amen. The reason I say he died in faith, because as he exited out, I honestly believe he had to make a final request. And his final request was, my wife and my children, they need to be cared for. They need to be set. And God has worked it. Hallelujah. Where there is no lack. Amen. Uh, are you following what I'm saying, folks? You know, I'm not going to say uh, he left because he chose to leave. I'm not going to say he left because because uh, 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 the pain was so intense that he had to leave. I'm not going to say he saw a, a piece of heaven and that's why he, uh, he chose to leave. Whatever the reason was, it's not up to me to know. And it's not up to you to know. That was already declared by God. And it's not up to us to know, church. But my question to you today is, will you let the experience of an awesome man that we loved and admire be a limit and uh, what do you call when you're trying to go up and, and a blockage? for your faith to continue to grow. Because I could hear the thought, if it didn't work for Pastor Josh, 
What guarantees do I have that it will work for me? Because the word has been proven. The word has been proven. I want this church to grow in faith to where we can see the miraculous again. Count, as Pastor Josh pastored this church for 20 years, count of all the people that have been healed of cancer, that were terminally ill with cancer, and God healed them. It's not just one or two, it's several. During his lifetime that God has healed. So will you base your faith? And I'm not saying this being, I love my brother. Will you base your faith on the experience? And trip over the hurdle? Or will you base your faith on the word of God and jump over the hurdle and continue to grow? When Josue was 13, somewhere around there, 12, I can't remember, I asked him, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, a police officer. I said, no, you can't be a police officer. And he goes, why not? Are police officers uh, bad? I said, no, they're good people. I said, but I could be a police officer if I want to. I said, and I explained this to him. I said, I said, my dad was my foundation. He worked out in the field. If I die working out in the field, I did not build on his foundation. So I got out of the field. I said, I'm your foundation. If you accomplish just what I accomplished, you've done nothing in life. You've wasted your time. I said, you have to go far and beyond what I have accomplished. You have to go way further than me. You have to be more financially set than me. You have to be richer than me. You have to be healthier than me. Why? Because I'm your foundation and you have to build on top. of the foundation I've set for you. Pastor Josh was our foundation. Will we trip on this hurdle and just stay at his foundation? Or will we grow and build upon his foundation. I honestly believe he would get a better reward and he would cheer for us a lot harder because Hebrews 12, 1 says that he is part of that cloud of witnesses that is watching how we run the race. And you might not be cheering me right now, but I just know from heaven, he says, preach it, preach it, bro, preach it, tell him how it is, preach it, tell him how it is. They can't let this trip them up. They cannot let this stop them. They got to grow. 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 They got to pass this hurdle. They got to pass this hurdle. Church, we got to pass this hurdle. Jose Caja se monte la brose case. The choice is ours. 
Church, the choice is ours. For me and my house, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will grow with the Lord. We will go further. Just give a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Church, break loose right now. Break loose in the name of Jesus. I declare this chain that has tried to bound us, that has tried to keep us down. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, you will not have a hold on us any longer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Let's just pray in the Spirit. Let's stand and raise our hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Church, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Build up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Brahma serio, Brahma serio, se la brandene, me la rasa, me la rasa, me la rasa, o cramdanasi, o cramdanasi, o cramdanasi, e la mosete, e la mosete, ye clemose, ye clemose, ye clemose, me stando, me stando, se cravasi, ho sararasi. Ho salarasi, ho salarasi, ho salarasi, se taro kose, mandoro seta, lebra mavase. Ho salarakatria, ho ma sete le rebo kose, indrio seta la broko seta tamavaseria. He sa ha 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 ha. Ho 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 ho. Hey, 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 Saha, ho ra ka se ta ha, ho ha ha ha, thank you, Father, thank you, Father, thank you, Father, thank you, Father, thank you, hallelujah, 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 thank you, Lord Jesus, like Papa Hagen used to say, I don't know about you, but I just preach me happy. You know, just give a laugh unto the Lord right now. Just give a laugh unto the Lord, hallelujah. Give a laugh unto the Lord, hallelujah. Ha 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 
Pastor Eli, that was amazing. Thank you. Well, okay, some announcements. Don't forget, we'll be here tomorrow morning. And the doors are opening opening at 8.30. Um, our first session is beginning at 9, 9 a.m., so be here. Invite someone. This is just the beginning. Pastor Josue will be speaking in the morning at 9. God is going to build on tonight's message and let us grow together. I love you. God bless you. We'll see you in the morning. Amen.